In this video, I'm going to go over some uh, good starter render settings uh, for an animation that you're going to render out of Cinema 4D. Now, this is going to be different project to project, of course, uh, depending on your specific needs. But these are good basic uh, requirements. First thing you want to do is open up your animation. Our animation is, uh, at least the one I'm using, is this simple camera move uh, in a primitive scene that's been lit using three-point lighting. You want to go to your render settings, which is this button uh, right here. It looks like a clapboard with uh, a dialog behind it. And the first thing you want to do is go to your general tab. In the render engine, select full render. In output, click on this triangle and choose film video. And uh, I think a really great uh, format is NTSC D1 widescreen square pixel. And this is basically, this is standard definition widescreen. If you're rendering out HD for a, a project, you probably already know what these render settings are. Uh, but it, the highest resolution, best quality, uh, render settings you're ever probably going to need are HDTV 1080 2997. But again, for this, NTSC D1 widescreen square pixel. What that does is it adjusts your width and your height. And uh, your frame range is another important setting to check. It defaults to current frame, which gives you a preview of a single frame. What we want to choose is all frames. So my frames 0 to 90 will all get rendered. On the Save tab, you want to adjust your file format. If you're just create, you want to create a single movie and your, your frames are running pretty quickly, I would render out as a QuickTime movie at the bottom here. Now if you're, your frames are taking 5 or 10 minutes to render and each frame is precious, there's a lot of effort inv invested, uh, I would render out to a still frame format like uh, PNG. But in our case this is going to render pretty quick so a QuickTime movie is fine. Bit depth uh, for movies, you can't have higher than 8 bit. If you were rendering out to something else, you could uh, use a higher value. Alpha channel is a nice thing to turn on if you want to be able to punch out the background. Only turn on straight alpha if you plan to composite your footage. Now, it will be a better composite if you turn on straight alpha, but if you don't uh, composite your footage, you're going to get weird jagged edges around there. So leave that off for now. Turn on 24-bit dithering, and if you have any sound, might as well include it. Then go to your anti-aliasing settings. If you render your picture right now and everything looks good to you, all the colors look good, there aren't any problems, you can probably leave anti-aliasing set to geometry. However, if you've got any jagged edges on your textures or in glass, for example, you might want to choose best and that'll fix any jagged edges you see. If you still see jagged edges, you're going to want to increase the minimum and maximum levels here by one step each until you get a good look. The filter here is currently set to still image, which gives you nice crisp edges, but uh, you want to actually set that to animation and give it a render. Makes your edges a little bit softer, but they'll look better uh, when they are moving. That is about it. All you have to do from that point is save your scene and render to picture viewer. Now if you like these render settings and you want to use them again, you can right click on a render setting here and choose save preset and it'll save those out. Uh, I've already probably given too much detail for an introductory video, but uh, that should do for you. Take care.